By request, I've been asked to process a wildlife photo using Capture One. We're going to process this image of this great blue heron. We started out with this, and when I'm done processing, I end up with this. Somebody requested that I show how I go about processing a wildlife image in Capture One. So we're going to do this with this image of this great blue heron. And that kind of reminds me, if you guys have any requests at all, any types of videos you'd like to see concerning Capture One or any application or any type of video concerning photography, let me know. Just leave a comment below this video. Now, we're going to start working here, and you probably noticed, those of you that haven't seen my earlier videos, that my Capture One probably looks different than yours. That's because I customized the workspace. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to that video where I demonstrate how to totally customize your Capture One workspace to make it work best for you. Also, in the description below this video, I'll list all the equipment I used, the camera settings I used, and the exposure info for this specific shot. Now, I like to crop early in my workflow, but I don't think this image needs to be cropped, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to jump, and I think the uh, white balance is fine too, and I usually do those two things first, crop, then white balance, but that's okay on this image. I'm going to go right to dynamic range. I'm going to open up shadows again a little bit, and what I'm doing is I'm looking at the darkest part of the bird. I'm really not concerned about the background that much. I really am more concerned with the actual heron. So I'm looking at the feathers, these dark feathers, and I'd like to see detail uh, throughout those feathers. Similarly, for the highlights, I look at the brightest parts here, and I want to see some detail there. So I'll keep pushing up the highlight recovery here until I see some detail start to come through. And that actually looks pretty good right there. So we'll double click to zoom back out. We'll go to exposure. And I think overall, um, I'm going to add some contrast now. Not that much contrast, just a little bit of contrast. And I think I'll add some saturation. You can see we've come a long way already. All I've really uh, moved was four sliders, these two. And I moved contrast and saturation. And you could see there's before and there's after. So we've, <laughs> we've actually done quite a bit. That might be a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to pull that down a little bit. Maybe around the right 15. Let's do a before after there. Or hold the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac. And then while you're holding in that key, click on this undo arrow right here. And hold in the left mouse button when you do that. And there's before. And there is after. So, so far, so good. Levels. I'm not sure how much we got to do with levels. Um, maybe just kind of rain in the highlights just a little bit. It's a little kind of the, the, the brightest parts are a little bit too hot. I just want to bring those down a little bit. And maybe just now I'm going to introduce some more um, darker areas in the image. Give me some more contrast, some more tonal depth in the image, some really darker areas going through some really uh, brighter areas as well. Now I'm going to go to noise reduction and I'm going to double click on the image when I have the hand tool active to zoom in. There is some noise there. Again, I'll have all the camera settings in the description below this video. So I'm going to turn luminance noise up if I can to 70 and let it render it takes a second and there's a little color noise in there too so i'm going to bring color up to 65 ish and it seemed to have eliminated the color noise there's still a little bit of noise in there i'm not going to go too crazy 75 because it's mostly the noise is in this uh blurred out background and there's not a lot of noise on the bird itself as you can see so i think that's good we're going to double click to zoom back out I'm going to go to clarity and I'm going to jump down to structure first. I like adding structure to feathers and fur, 
but you got to be careful. It's very easy to overdo this. So I'm going to double click on the bird itself and I really want to add some clarity and structure into the face of the bird. So I'm going to go to structure first. And as I said, it's kind of easy to overdo this. You could see even when I push it up to 53, it, it did quite a bit, didn't it? But that might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to zoom back out by double clicking and just let it render. And that might be a little bit too much. So I'm just going to back it down to 45 and then I'll bring clarity up a little bit to 10. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to go with that I think. I, maybe I'm tempted to push structure up just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Kind of getting greedy. Boy it looks pretty good might be just a little too much. I'm so cognizant of this. I think we'll leave it right there. That looks pretty good. So clarity is good. And I don't think I need to do anything with the tone curve. And um, with the color editor, I don't know if I really need to do anything with this as well. Um, I don't think so. I think, I think it's... We don't want to misrepresent a wild, a wild animal, or any animal for that matter, usually. You want to have a faithful representation of what that animal really looked like. So you tend to not want to like really oversaturate anything or even alter colors or anything like that. Uh, so I kind of like the color the way it is. I'm going to go to sharpening. I'm going to double click again. And I'm going to just add a little bit of sharpening, maybe 250-ish. And I think the radius threshold halo um, suppression is fine. See, as I look at it, it might be a little bit over sharpened. I'm very, um, from my days of shooting stock photography, uh, usually you would really had to guard against over sharpening something that would get you an automatic rejection. So uh, I'm very cognizant of not over sharpening anything, or, you know, if you're wondering why. All right, there's a couple issues I need to take care of. I want to brighten up the bird's eye a little bit. The sun was a little bit to the bird's left over this way. So this side of the bird's face is not as bright as it probably could be. So I want to brighten up the eye a little bit. And I want to do something with this, whatever this is in the ground. It's a little bit distracting. So I think we'll do the eye first. I'm just going to click the plus sign to add another layer. And we're going to go to the exposure. And I'm just going to click up exposure temporarily. And then I'm going to get a brush. I'm going to hit the B key for the brush. The brush is right here. Um, and actually, um, what we'll do is we'll zoom in. And then I'm going to resize the brush with the left bracket key to make it smaller. The right bracket key makes it larger. And I'm going to paint around the eye of the bird. Now that's, of course, way too bright, right? I mean, way too bright. I understand that. So we'll bring it back to fit. So we're going to bring that exposure down considerably. As I mentioned, I just want to brighten it up a little. I don't want it, again, I don't want to misrepresent what the bird actually looked like. Point 0.2 of a stop, I think looks pretty good there. I could turn this layer off. There's off, there's before, and there's after. Maybe I could get away with a little more. 0.25. There's before, and there's after, and we could even bring saturation up to a touch. All right, so there, now we did the eye. Now we need to take care of this, whatever this is down here. So we're going to add, I think we'll try a heel layer. So I'm going to add a heel layer. And again, we have the brush, and I'm just going to brush uh, to cover up this, I think it might be a stick, but I'm not really sure. Okay, so we'll come in here, and wherever red is, that's where we're getting rid of. All right, now let's see. It sampled a spot that's getting chunk of the bird, so we have to go up in here, I think. Down a little bit. Starting to get a part of his beak in there. I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, that's, that's about as good as I'm going to get right there. We have this spot right here. Maybe I could. 
kind of get rid of that as well, but I doubt it. We'll undo that. I'll hit Command Z. So I think that looks pretty good right there. And I think I'm really done. I'm just going to finish it off with a vignette. We'll go to the vignette. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a dark vignette. Kind of just draws everyone's attention back towards the bird. And that's it. That's my um, workflow for processing a wildlife image. The only thing I didn't really do is any cropping because I didn't have to. I used a very long lens with a teleconverter. So I was able, you know, to get a lot of reach with the equipment I used. And I didn't have to adjust white balance. I just used auto white balance on my camera and it turned out to be fine. You could see the white feathers are white. So I think everything is good. So again, if you guys are interested in me doing any specific videos about anything, not just Capture One, I'll put it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. And I'd like to thank everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.